All right, Peter. So first of all, I'm super excited to talk to you because you are actually one of the first interviews I've done as a blogger way back in the day. And oh, so cool. The subject, the subject matter for this episode of Faceplant is right up my alley because I interviewed you for Rise of the Guardians oh back then. God. You came wow. through Atlanta and we sat down and talked and I, I'm actually like blown away by this episode because... <laughs> I was sitting in that interview and I loved Rise of the Guardian. Uh -huh. My kids uh -huh. loved it. Um, and at the time we were talking, I actually just pulled up our interview from back then and re-listened uh -huh. to it. There were rumors of Academy Award nomination. Yeah, I know. And, you know, and I even said to you in the interview, you're giving Disney a run for their money. I really think you have something amazing here. Mm -hmm. So for me to hear you say that you're, it's a flop, I was like, what? So I'm curious, what constitutes a flop in Hollywood in this situation? Uh, uh, yeah, when I say a flop, it doesn't mean a bad movie. It just means a movie that for whatever reason didn't make as much money as it was supposed to make. That's it. And it was, it was, that was the case with, with Rise. It was like, you know, we would, we would have our, all of our little preview test screenings and people would come out and give it all these like 95%, you know, oh, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. People crying in the test screenings before the movie's finished. All this stuff, pe people were crazy about it. And there were all these people who were telling us, oh, this, gonna, this movie's gonna smash, it's gonna be huge, it's gonna be, you know, gonna make a billion dollars, blah, blah, blah. And we were all like, wow, can this be possible? Is this really happening? But, uh, you know, for people to react to the movie, they have to see the movie. And part of the problem with us was there was just a bunch of things that didn't go right with the release of the movie. And, you know, and I'll, I'll sit here and say, oh, sure, if the movie had been, you know, 10% better than it was, who knows, maybe things would have turned out completely different. So that may be on, on me or on us. But all the other things like, uh, you know, the advertising kind of like, Mm -hmm. making the movie look like something that it wasn't really when we thought that well if people knew what the movie really was that might be interesting because it was different uh the the time of the time of you know the weekend that it was re or the week that it was released because i think it was released the day before thanksgiving and they were thinking oh a long holiday weekend but it's like well the day before thanksgiving a lot of people are traveling to get to you know grandma's house or wherever or they're yeah. Thanksgiving, you know, how many people go to the movies on Thanksgiving, really? Uh, so there was, that was one thing. We also had a lot of competition. I think there was like a, I think there was a James Bond movie and a Twilight movie that had just opened like a week before. Mm -hmm. So there were, there were a lot of, all that to say, there were a lot of other issues that like kind of didn't go right, didn't go our way when the movie was released. And just not that many people knew about it it was the weirdest thing and it was you know and i would run into people after that who would tell me you know i didn't know i i i thought your movie was going to be a completely different thing and i saw it and i loved it and i was like yeah i know a lot of people, a lot of people feel that way <laughs> oh that stinks and i hate that for yeah. you because i feel like it it was such a great movie well yeah it was um, great. You know, you know, the other aspect that you talk a lot about in Faceplant is um, your love for, for storyboarding and, and mm -hmm. you know, all your art and everything like that. So it's got to be hard as an artist to put down the pencil, so to speak, mm -hmm. and, and have others create the art for you. So I'm curious, and be honest, if you did any of the storyboarding for um, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is, I, I didn't think I was going to do any, and I did a ton. I did a <laughs> lot of storyboarding on, on, uh, on Spider-Verse because sometimes it's just the, the most efficient way to communicate the ideas. You know, sometimes it's like, look, I can spend, you know, weeks and weeks trying to explain to somebody and seeing what they have. No, that's not it. Try again. No, that's not it. Try it more like this. No, that, or I can just sit down and like, you know, start banging it out myself and, saying, okay, let's start here. This is, this is pretty much what I want. So it's, uh, it, it, it kind of turned into, it kind of turned into that. And on that movie, it was a, it was sort of a, everybody into the pool and do what you do best, you know, best, best idea wins kind of scenario. So it just made more sense to sort of, to sort of uh, uh, jump in and just 
just storyboard again. Right. And you mentioned also that, you know, when you first started doing your art, you possibly were thinking about going into comics. So whose decision was it to make Spider versus animation really pop right out of the comic book strip? You know, that, that was one of the first things I think Phil Lord and Chris Miller, when they first, uh, when they first got offered the opportunity to do it from Sony and they had said, well, the only way we would want to do Spider-Man if, if we can bring is if we can bring something really different to it. Yeah. And th there were a couple of things. They, the, one of the things was we want to do the Miles Morales story instead of, uh, you know, the usual Peter Parker story we've seen a billion times. And Sony said, okay, yeah, sure, go for it. And the other thing they said is we want it to be really visually different to differentiate it from anything that anybody's ever seen about Spider-Man on the big screen. And, uh, part of the way, part of the thinking was, since we're doing this as an animated movie, uh, there's stuff about animation that lends itself to being more graphic and more illustrative, like a comic book. So let's take our inspiration from comic books and see how much of that feel that we can get into this movie. Right. So um, are, do you have your fingers in Spider-Verse too? Are you gonna be involved and going? I'm, <laughs> Uh, maybe. I mean, who knows? <laughs> I mean, we have a date, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's. A <laughs> I get Not my hands. Sure how well, that'll oh. stick with COVID and everything, but we'll have a date. <laughs> I, I'll get my hand slapped if I say too much, but I, I'm. Uh, I, I lurk in the shadows over there, so. Yeah, you're like, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> so, if you could bring any story to the screen, comedy, oh, wow. any related, what would it be? It's hard. I mean, I, I do have a couple of, I, I do have a few stories that I'm kind of working on bringing uh, that I can't talk too much about, but um, yeah, I don't, pe you know, people ask that and it's, it's, it's funny, but I, I don't have a lot of particular, like I've always wanted to do a World War II story. I'm not really that specific. It, it, it depends on the qualities of the individual story. You know, what are the characters and what are the characters going through and what's the, what are the themes, you know, what are the, what are the possibilities that uh, making it a movie could really like allow you to really dig into what movies do. You know, I, I'm really interested in, in, in that kind of thing. So, I mean, bottom line, you know, I'm just really interested in movies that, uh, that have a real uh, human center to them, you know, rather than an I, rather than a, 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 a sort of a, a, a trick or like a, a a high concept idea at the middle of them. I'm, I, I I like stories with great characters, you know, with characters that you fall in love with or that you like, you you experience the the story through them, and you really, you know, either identify with them or you're uh, I, actually, yeah, that you identify with, with them, even if they're doing something they shouldn't be doing, you know, and you like, you're, you, you understand them. So, and then making people feel emotion. I, I think that's a big reason I wanted to go into uh, movie making was the emotion that I would feel coming from the, the big screen. I somehow wanted to be inside that and be a part of it. Yeah. So I recently read on Twitter <laughs> that you might be interested in a Rise of the Guardian 2 possibility and that you might be interested to kind of take a step into to fixing essentially and, and going more into detail with it. But is that something you would be interested in doing? Oh yeah, I'd I'd love to. I mean, I I I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I I don't know. Actually, I don't know why they wouldn't want to do it. I was like, make something and put it on Netflix. Those characters are all so fun, and that world is so. Uh, there's so much to explore in that in the world of those characters that I'm I'm sort of like, wow, they're just they're just kind of sitting there, you know? Why not? And uh, I I had such a good time working on the movie and got to work with such great people. And uh, we, you know, we all, we all gave it a, our all. So, um, uh, and the, and I, I think I probably mentioned in that same interview, you know, when you work on something for that long, those characters, they kind of become real to you, mm -hmm. you know? So there's a part of me that's like, 
those guys de deserve another shot. You know? Yeah. They should have another, they should have another chance. Yeah. They really should, you know, because I really love them. So. Yeah. So my daughter loves to draw and mm -hmm. I'd love to hear what you have in terms of inspiration for young artists that might be interested in storyboarding or just animation mm -hmm. in general, um, you know, to guide them and where they should go. Do you have any advice for them? I'd say don't stop. That's the biggest, the number one biggest thing. Don't stop. If you're, if, if you really enjoy it, you know, you probably, you won't want to stop, but just don't stop. And th there's, there's so much you can learn. I would say, one of the best things you can do, no matter what kind of drawing you're going to do, is uh, try to get into drawing from life, you know, and that can just be, you know, drawing an apple on the table and really paying attention to where the light and shadow and all that stuff is and really kind of studying that. It could be drawing a person who's sitting, you know, and on the so sitting on the sofa watching TV, but it's it's all about looking and understanding why things are put together the way they are. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I know when I was a kid, all I wanted to draw was like Godzilla and superheroes. And you know, <laughs> I was like, draw somebody sitting on a sofa. It just sounded like the stupidest, most boring thing in the world. But when you actually start doing it and you start getting lost in, oh, that's how fabric folds. Or, oh, that's that's what a nose looks like when a light hits it from that way. And, you know, you, it really teaches you to look at things in detail. And uh, that helps your that helps your drawing to me. That helped my drawing more than almost anything else I could think of. So it would be keep doing it. Don't stop. Uh, life drawing, uh, even if it's just something, some stupid little, you know, a pen or a, or a something laying on a table. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, have fun. And, and uh, the, you will, you know, the, the, the doors that you want to go through will present themselves if you just keep doing it and you're, you have a love for it. Yeah. It'll, it'll take care of itself. Awesome. All right. Well, last question. Do you have a favorite comic book character? Ooh, wow. Hmm. Uh, I've, I've, I've had plenty over the course of my life. For a long time, Spider-Man was my favorite, you know, and I guess in some ways he still kind of is. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the, the, probably the, the big, if we're talking about superheroes, then the, the big classics, you know, Superman, Batman, <laughs> Superman, Bat, I mean, probably the most boring, typical ones, you know, Superman, Batman, the Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man. Nice. Those, uh, those, like, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty classic comic. Oh, wait a minute, the X-Men. Oh, yes. Um, I loved when I was, yeah, growing up, I loved, loved, loved the X-Men, so. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us, and I wish you all the best, and I hope to see lots more from Spider-Verse, because, again, <laughs> that's another one of our absolute favorite movies. When we are bored and need something to do, I'm like, hey, we can watch Spider-Verse. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, great. It's great talking to you again. <laughs> yeah, good. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, have a great rest of your day. Okay, you too. Take Bye. Care.